What was the genetic makeup of the Hallstatt culture, a proto-Celtic culture that played a significant role in the history of Western and in Central Europe? What haplogroups and genetic markers were common amongst them? Could you share some of these? And was the Hallstatt culture connected to previous archaeological cultures of Europe, such as the Bell Beaker complex? But firstly, what exactly was the Hallstatt culture? Well, it takes its name from the town in modern Austria called Hallstatt where there was a rich salt mine and where over 1,000 burials have been found. It was a culture that existed from around 1200 to 450 BC, with its lifespan usually broken into four phases, from Hallstatt A to D. It was preceded by an earlier culture of Europe known as the Urnfield culture, and it was followed by the Latin culture, a culture associated with the ancient Celts. The Hallstatt culture itself is strongly associated with proto-Celtic speaking people, and it's one of the main cultures that the ancient Celts grew out of. Now how broad was the territory of the Hallstatt culture? Well by the 6th century BC, the Hallstatt culture had expanded to include wide territories. Falling into two zones, both east and west, between them covering much of western and central Europe down to the Alps, and extending into northern Italy. Parts of Britain and Iberia were also included in the ultimate expansion of the culture. Now, although settlement size in the Hallstatt culture was relatively small in general, there are a few impressive settlements that are worth noting. This is a reconstruction of what a hill fort in modern Germany would have looked like, known as Heineberg. It is close to the modern borders of Switzerland and Austria, and stood on a strategically positioned mountain spur next to the River Danube. It is considered to be one of the most important early Celtic centres in Central Europe, and it has been referred to as the oldest city north of the Alps. The Hallstatt culture was based on farming, but their metalwork was advanced, and iron saws became more common after 800 BC. As the culture developed, so did trading networks, both internally and externally with neighbouring cultures, such as with the Greeks and the Etruscans. This is an imported Greek wine-mixing vessel found in a burial mound near Burgundy in modern France, for instance. Social distinctions became increasingly important as the culture developed, with emerging elite classes of both chieftains and warriors, and perhaps those with other skills. We increasingly see more elaborate burials from Hallstatt C, or from around 800 to 650 BC, with elites often buried with four-wheeled wagons, as well as other artefacts, such as horse harnesses and swords. This is the incredible straight red cult wagon, which was found in a princely grave in modern Austria in the 19th century, and it is dated to around 600 BC. The central figure has been interpreted as a representation of a dear goddess, similar to the Greek goddess of the hunt, Artemis. The scene has been interpreted by some as a sacrifice, with the wagon perhaps serving as a cult object for the consumption of a libation, which is the ritual pouring of a liquid as an offering to a deity or spirit. Now that we have a better understanding of what the Hallstatt culture was, what about its genetic makeup, and how did it connect to the various other cultures of Eurasia? Firstly, let's start by looking at haplogroups. Well, a study published just this month in Nature Human Behaviour found some interesting insights into the main haplogroups of the Hallstatt culture, as the authors write. We find that the Hallstatt Y chromosome gene pool was dominated by R1BM269 and the G2A P303 lineages, with subhaplogroup G2A L497 accounting for 37% of the haplotypes in the sample. Interestingly, we find that individuals with haplogroup G2A L497 exhibit significantly more Southern European ancestry than individuals carrying haplogroup R1B M269. Although G2A is extremely rare in present-day Europe north of the Alps, G2A L497 still peaks in the area of the former West Hallstatt Crest, namely Eastern France, Southern Germany and Switzerland as well as Northern Italy thus providing additional evidence for a survival or resurgence of Hallstatt Iron Age ancestry in those regions. Now, long-term followers of this channel will know that this haplogroup, R1B M269, has came up numerous times in previous videos, and it is associated with the spread of steppe-related ancestry across Eurasia through the earlier Yamnaya culture and associated cultures, and I have previously made videos on the Yamnaya that will link above. R1B M269 is obviously a subclad of the broader R1B haplogroup. RM269 is the most common paternal European haplogroup today, and it increases in frequency on an east to west gradient. Its prevalence in Poland, for instance, is estimated at 22.7%, whereas in Wales, is 92.3%, which is quite remarkable. It is carried by over 100 million European men. 
Haplo group GP303 is a branch of the Haplo group GM201 and it's found in men across much of Eurasia today. Other studies support the idea that the Hallstatt Y chromosome haplogroups were mainly R1b or G2a. On the maternal side, H was the most common maternal lineage it seems amongst the Hallstatt culture. To be more specific, analysis of the remains of a male and female from modern Czech Republic for instance revealed that the man had a maternal haplogroup H6a1a and the female HVO. There was some diversity, however, with another study that analysed five individuals that belonged to either the Hallstatt or the early Latin culture found that they had the mitochondrial haplogroups K1A2A, J1C20, H7D, U5A1A1 and J1C16261. In general though, to put the Hallstatt culture in more of a historical context, a really interesting study from 2020 looked at the last 7,000 years of demographic and genetic changes in France. Now for context before we get into the details, this study basically notes that during the Bronze Age, in France and also in Europe more broadly, there was a pretty massive transformation in the genetics of Europe, with step ancestry basically being introduced to many parts of Europe including in France, this study notes for instance that Bronze Age individuals in France display new mitochondrial haplogroups U2, U4 and I, although they are at low frequencies. On the Y chromosome, this study noted that a drastic Y chromosome turnover occurs during the Bronze Age, where R1b replaces the pre-existing diversity of Neolithic lineages in our sampling. Now the Hallstatt culture arises really just at the turn of the Bronze Age ending and the Iron Age starting around 1200 BC, although there is some regional variation in this transition. So with all this context in mind, this study basically notes that despite the massive genetic transformation in Bronze Age Europe, the transition to the Iron Age was much smoother and that the Hallstatt culture essentially grew out of the previous cultures, the Bronze Age cultures of Europe, without any major new introduction, migration of people from afar uh, into Europe to form the Hallstatt culture. They essentially formed out of the previous cultures and the previous people of Europe, as the study noted. Bronze and Iron Age France share a common space in the PCA plot, both shifted towards modern Central Europe and falling within the genetic diversity of Bronze Age Britain and Central Europe with a homogenisation of the step component. In contrast to what was described for Central Europe, there is no further shift towards Eastern and Eurasian genotypes during the Iron Age. Instead, the step component, heterogeneously distributed between individuals during the Bronze Age, ranging from 30 to 70%, becomes homogenous, and individuals from the Hallstatt and the Latin culture in the French territory display similar affinities towards both modern and ancient populations. This could indicate that the transition from the Bronze Age to the Iron Age in France was mostly driven by cultural diffusion, without major gene flow from an external population. This would be consistent with an archaeological and linguistic hypothesis proposing that the Celts from the Second Iron Age descended from populations already established in Western Europe within the boundaries of the Bellbeaker cultural complex. It is important to mention, however, that due to the relative genetic homogeneity amongst European populations by the Bronze Age, subsequent migrations between different parts of Europe could easily remain unnoticed at this level of coverage. Now I should note that obviously this study only looks at France, so there is a kind of limitation to that. And as well, obviously the last line there of, of the study basically said that there was a potential that there was movements within Europe that wouldn't really be showing up in the, in the data, given the genetic continuity ac across Europe in general. But um, obviously with these caveats aside, it definitely seems that the whole stack culture emerged from the previous populations of Europe, the Bronze Age populations of Europe, and there wasn't any major gene flow from external sources, it definitely seems from the information we have at the moment. And there was a genetic continuity between the Hallstatt culture and the previous cultures of Europe, such as the Bellbeaker culture. Speaking of the Bellbeaker culture, what was the Bellbeaker culture and what was their impact on the genetics of Europe? To find out, please click here. Thanks for watching, please subscribe and hit the bell, and I'll see you next time.